Welcome to Bootham Junior School. It's my absolute pleasure to show you around today. I'm sorry that some things might look a little bit different, but you'll appreciate that in the current situation, we've had to make a few changes, but we're trying to keep everything as normal as we possibly can for the children. Let's start by having a look around. The library's first. So, as you can see, this is a really warm, welcoming space. Um, and the children tend to come in here at least once a week uh, for reading sessions, story time, obviously to change their books. We take a really wide selection of newspapers and magazines and everything's computerised so they can reserve books, write reviews, they can even do that from home if they need to. So it's a really well used space. So. Along here, we've got various displays explaining some of the things that we think are really important here at school. We have our dispositions, which are six of the key skills that we think the children should be focusing on developing during their time with us. So, although they might be working in an academic lesson or in an extracurricular activity, they're also trying to be as adventurous, creative, independent, collaborative, reflective or resilient as possible. And that's something that as a whole school we work really hard at. There are plenty of opportunities for leadership in school. All of our year six children, for example, have a stewardship. It's something that they uh, apply for at the beginning of year six. They write a letter of application and then they're interviewed. And at the end of that process, they're given a job on our responsibility. Um, now those jobs are really wide ranging. It could be a house captain or a sports captain, but it could also be the Quaker steward or even an arts ambassador. There's something for everyone and it really gives them the opportunity to lead an area of school that they're passionate about. This is our studio space, come on in. Now it does look a little bit different at the moment. Um, we've had to repurpose some of our rooms because of the coronavirus. However, ordinarily this space is used as, um, as an art studio. We do large scale textile uh, or ceramic work in here or really anything that needs to be left out. So it could be um, construction work or junk modeling. It's also used for lots of music in school. So it's an area that our director of music, Jack McKenzie will use. And he teaches music all the way from nursery right the way up into the senior school. So there's a lovely link there with our, our friends at, the, at Big Bootham. We're heading now down to our early years unit. Now our early years foundation stage comprises nursery and reception and children can join from the term in which they're turning three. So you'll see three, four and five year olds all working together down here. There's two separate classrooms, one for nursery and one for reception, but the children have free flow between those areas and the outside space throughout the day. Let's have a look. Welcome to reception, come on in. So, this is our reception classroom. We've got our four-year-olds in this room. As you can see at the moment, for a start, a lot of them are dressed as either heroes or villains. We're having a, a superheroes and villains day. Um, but you can also see that they're having snack. Now, food is something that we take very seriously here at Bootham. And in early years, snack is an opportunity for a teacher-led activity where they'll be talking about sharing, they'll be talking about colours, shapes, basic early number work. Um, and of course, they'll be having a lovely social time as well. So it does look as if the big bad wolf is currently delivering snack, but it is our reception teacher. Shall we carry on into nursery? This is a shared space used by both nursery and reception. Um, it's a large space that they can particularly get out technology in, so they tend to use the large coding um, materials that we've got, like the bee bots, out in this space here. This is our nursery classroom. They're all at PE at the moment, which is why it's so nice and quiet in here. It's a lovely large space with lots of different areas set up for the children. Um, usually there would be a few more things out um, for the children to play with. What we're doing at the moment is getting out things as the children want to play with them, cleaning them, putting them away and getting them back out when we need to. Um, but you can see we've got a role play area, home corner, a creative area at the back. And down here we've got the, the quieter areas with book corners and things like that. Um, there. This part of the room has um, water play. It's also got the um, uh, either pens, pencils, scissors. So anything to do with fine motor skills happens on this table here. And you can see it's all at child level. So they, the children know that anything in this room is available for them to use. The only rule is that at the end of the day, they help to tidy up. 
Um, toilets at both ends of the room because at this age if, uh, if that's what they need then it needs to be readily accessible um, and it's just a lovely warm bright welcoming space. We tend not to have more than about 15 children in here at any one time. It's a sessional nursery so the children can choose or you can choose whether to come for mornings or whole days um, and most children will build up their sessions over the course of the year as they approach reception. Outside space is obviously really important in early years and they do have free flow to the outside all day every day. We have four adults that work in the, in the rooms in nursery and reception and if the children want to go outside it's very simple, an adult will go outside with them. So we have two main outdoor areas, one um, with the adventure playground in it and another with more small world toys, a very natural landscape with um, a river that runs through there and also the opportunity to play with, with sand, with water, with mud, anything along those lines. Outdoor play is incredibly important to all of our year groups, but particularly to our early years foundation stage. Like I said, they have completely free flow access to the outdoors throughout the day. An adult will always come outside with them. This area is for natural play. So we have a, a river that the children can control. They, they control the flow of the water. They can dam it. They can float things down it. Um, they are out here almost every day, either in bare feet or wellies, depending on the weather. Um, we also have a sensory path that the children like to walk around um, and obviously a sheltered area for them to, to play under. They will often bring books out or small world toys to play in that area. And then we have a creative um, stage and backdrop that they can design for themselves um, towards the, the far end over there. This side of the early years area has the house in it. Now we very deliberately have not created a particular building and that's so that the children can decide what that building is um, on a day by day basis. So it has been a castle, it has been a house, it's been a pet shop, it could be absolutely anything. It's up to them and their imagination. And we have everything that they could need to create that. Um, they just have to tell us what it is that they want to be playing with that day. Further on past the fence line, we have the second outdoor area, which is our adventure play area. Um, they, an adult will always go out there with them. They have um, a, a small adventure playground. It's also where our mud kitchen is. And we have a climbing wall, a traversing wall that they can use. As well as the adventure playground and traversing wall, we've got a um, forest school area. So our children would usually be going off to local woodlands at least once a week with nursery and reception. They have a morning each in the woods. At the moment, we aren't able to travel so easily. So we've recreated that experience for them here on site. We have a small nature area at the back of school, um, but here in our early years area, we have a fire pit and benches. So the children often on a Tuesday or Wednesday will be toasting marshmallows. Um, They've made porridge for the three bears out here. They have a really lovely time. Um, it can be as simple as digging for worms. They love it. They absolutely have a great time out here. We've also got, as you've seen, our mud kitchen area. Um, and then the fields that you can see are available for the children. So we do have organized sport um, a couple of times a week out there for each class, but it's also just a free play area as well. And that's our early years unit. Along this whole corridor, we've got our Key Stage 1 and Lower Key Stage 2, so Years 1, 2, 3 and 4. The first classroom we've got is Year 1. You'll see that all of the classrooms have hand sanitizer on the outside, and when we get up to the older years, you'll see that the tables are arranged in rows. That's not normal, but at the moment it's what we need to do. Come on in. Our Year 1 classroom should look similar to reception in many ways. There's still lots of toys and lots of um, free play that happens in Year 1, but as you can see, there's also a little bit more focused work that goes on. Um, in Year 1 and Year 2, each class has their own teacher and their own teaching assistant, and class sizes are capped at 20, so we wouldn't have more than 20 children in a class. All of the classrooms have doors to the outside and the ability to work outside as well so they've got tables and equipment that they can spill outside on a nice day and work out there. Let's keep going. This is our year two classroom. Again the children aren't in at the moment but come on in. They'll be off in another area of the school. Um, but as you can see, once they're into year two, it does look a little bit more formal. They're still at group tables, um, but they are doing more formal lessons. And year two is when more of our specialist subjects kick in. So they'll be learning Spanish as their language in year two. They'll also be having specialist PE and music, the same as with year one and reception. 
Uh, they, again, the class teacher would work with a teaching assistant, so there's full-time support within the class, and we have a class size of 20. Doors to the outside, so that just like in year one, they can spill out and, and carry on with their play or their work outside. We're a very outdoorsy school, so most of the classes, the children will bring their wellies and a coat every day regardless, uh, whether that be for outdoor education or whether it's just for outdoor play. Let's keep going. The next room is year three. And at this stage, we've had to put the children into, into rows. That's purely because of the situation at the moment. Normally, they'd still be at group tables. Come on in. So this is our year three classroom and it looks to me at the moment as if they're doing some work on the Egyptians. We have quite a topic based approach so although their English and their maths might be um, taught as a discrete subject, science as well, lots of their history, their geography, their art will all be tied together with the topic um, and the year threes at the moment are looking at the ancient Egyptians and I believe they're looking forward to the end of term when they're having an Egyptian day um, all dressing up and I've heard the strains of walk like an Egyptian uh, through the corridors in school, so I imagine there'll be some singing as well. Not sure how historically accurate that is, but there we go. Let's keep going. The last room on this side is year four. Come on in. Here's our year four classroom. As you can see, again, we've got the desks facing the front, but that really is just with the current situation. Uh, it's a lovely creative classroom. We have a very creative curriculum um, with the children getting involved in lots of art and craft as well as their ordinary subjects and using that to tie everything together. Um, the children in year four learn French and you can see that they've tied that in with their artwork, learning about Claude Monet. So there's language and culture that is taught side by side. This is our assembly hall. It's where we hold morning meeting um, every week, which is our Quaker meeting for worship. We have that in place of an assembly each week. The whole school would ordinarily gather together. We sit in a square and we just have 10 or 15 minutes quietly together, thinking about whatever might be important to us to, as individuals or as a whole school at that time. This space is really well used. It's also where we have drama productions. It's where the choir rehearse and band rehearsals happen. Um, and it's also where we um, eat our lunch and do indoor PE. So it's very well used. Even during the current pandemic, we've been able to carry on with our singing lessons simply by moving them into the hall, which is a lovely big space. We can open the windows and we can be socially distanced while we're in there. This is one of our year five groups um, enjoying their singing lesson. This is our computer room. It's a fully equipped IT suite with everything that the children could possibly need. We also have a set of tablets that can go um, from class to class. And we are in the middle of a Chromebook trial at the moment with year five and year six. IT we know was really well used during uh, lockdown learning and we are absolutely ready should we need to, um, to, to do that again. So the children are used to using things like Google Classroom, Seesaw, lots of different applications that mean we can carry on providing as normal an education as is possible. Um, they practice those skills here in school and then they can use them either at home for homework or in the case of being in quarantine or isolation. Let's keep going. The next class we're going to see is our year five group. Now, from year five upwards, so into year five and year six, we actually move into two forms. So our one class of 20 usually has some new additions to it, making a class of maybe 25 or 28, and we split those into two. So we've got two forms in each of year five and year six. They interconnect, they have an interconnecting door in between the two classrooms, which means that they can easily be in different groups for things like maths or English, depending on what would be right for that group at that time. We tend to set the children in maths, but have mixed ability groups for everything else. Come on in. So this is the first of our year five classrooms. As you can see, it does look quite a lot more formal than perhaps it did for the younger year groups. There's still lots of creative work that goes on. At the moment, um, they seem to be engaged in some maths work. And we've got around, I think, 12 children in each of our two year five classes at the moment. Come on through. 
they have two teachers in year five and two classes and those groups are very small, around 12 children each. They still have the benefit of a, of a very well qualified teaching assistant in certain subjects, particularly the core subjects of maths and English. We know how important it is for the children to reach as high a level as possible in those subjects whilst not losing the creative elements. We aren't preparing for things like SATS exams, that's not something that we do here, so we do have the flexibility to provide a really exciting curriculum. This is the second of our Year 5 classrooms. And they're also obviously still engaged in maths as well, so the two groups are doing the same sort of thing at the same time. So they'll be having very similar experiences, but in small groups, that means we can tailor what we're doing to the needs of the particular children in each group. Just like in Year 5, we have two Year 6 classes split into two groups for things like Maths and English, um, interconnecting door in the middle so they can be in flexible groups if we need them to be. The whole purpose really of Year 6 is to get them ready for senior school. So we're doing lots of work on leadership, lots of work on resilience, and you'll see when we go in that even the furniture and the way the room is, um, is presented is meant to look more like a senior school. We want them to have the smoothest possible transition. We always have children that join Year 6 each year, new children, um, so there's a lot of work done on team building to make them into a cohesive unit and then to get read them ready for the senior school. Come on in. Here we are in the first of our two year six classrooms. As I said, the whole setup looks a little bit more grown up. Um, they are much more independent in their learning and the subjects that they're doing are quite wide ranging. So at this point, as well as the usual um, subjects that we'll have been teaching all the way through the school, they've also picked up Latin and Mandarin um, and their sciences have been split into biology, physics and chemistry. So it's a very uh, broad curriculum and it's one that will get them ready for year seven. Moving through, next door, we've got the other Year 6 class. Come on in. This is the second of our Year 6 classes. Um, they will be having similar experiences to, our, to the first classroom and possibly at a different time of day. Uh, but here they are. Again, you can see it looks quite grown up. It, it's definitely about getting ready for senior school. Still with the doors to the outside. And at this age, we still do outdoor education, um, but it's more focused on learning through the curriculum. So they will be, for example, if they're doing rivers, they will be actually going out with our outdoor ed teacher to find a local river and to explore the geography of that. Um, same with climate uh, or perhaps areas of the science curriculum. This is our outdoor space. We're very, very fortunate to have so much outdoor space here on the edge of York. Uh, we've got huge playing fields, tennis courts, and also this, uh, the tarmac area for the children to play on. And what you can also see is our amphitheater where the children enjoy uh, performing music or drama, but also just sitting and chatting at a break time. We've got our peace garden right at the end with the peace posts, which is another feature of our, of our Quaker school. The children like to go there and just sit quietly together. Behind the Adventure Playground, we have a small nature area where the children like to go. They create bug hotels, um, look at the native species that we've got growing in there. It's a complementary exercise to our work in forest school. We also have a cob oven where the children can cook outdoors. So they make lots of bread, pizza, uh, stew, all sorts of different things that they will cook. Um, and this is a, just a nice area that they will use at playtime, either at break or lunch. Food here at Bootham is incredibly important to us. We have a full uh, kitchen team who provide hot lunches every day. Everything that, we, um, everything that we eat is homemade. We don't buy anything in as a made product. It's all fresh, it's all local, and it's all as seasonal as it possibly can be. Um, the children here eat really, really well. It doesn't matter what dietary requirements you have, the chef here, Tom, can definitely cater for them. And there's always a choice, a huge choice. Um, of hot and cold options, be it meat or vegetarian. We make no distinction between those options. They're just available to anyone who, who would like to choose them that day. And that brings us 
to the end of our tour. Now, obviously, if you have any questions or you would like to get in touch to find out a little bit more, then please do call or email the school. Hazel Gordon, who is our registrar, would be really happy to hear from you, answer any of your questions and put you in touch with somebody who can help.